spirit of mine, the spirit of mine, the spirit of mine, the spirit of mine. You can say what you want to. Clinical improvisation provides children with a safe, non-verbal means of release. Watch Freddie musically release his pain and creatively channel his anger through the cymbal playing. Um, we've seen this uh, young boy being able to release his pain um, behaviorally through some action of his own. Well, I was, I was um, pretty uh, carefree in my 20s, and uh, I was seeing a guy, but I was, but I, he wasn't the only guy I was seeing that. Um, I didn't know that he had HIV, and I was pretty young and naive. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty sure of, that he was the one who infected me. Um, and I've learned now that now is not the time to place blame, because if you place blame on people, all you're doing is stigmatizing them, and then making people fear them which is HIV stigma, and that doesn't help anyone. I'd rather place the blame on the virus, like, why is the virus here in the first place? And why did it kill so many people? So, um, that's how I got infected. Years ago, in my, in my mid-twenties, when I contacted HIV, essentially, um, I was work, I was working, I was quite successful. I was working for a telecom. I went to a nightclub because I, I had gone a couple of years without dating, so I went to a nightclub and met a guy. And uh, he lived in my hometown, so it was, it was really nice to meet somebody from back home. And uh, we hit it off for a weekend. This was in 1998 when we decided to stop using condoms. I was actually taking a shower and he joined me in that shower and I grabbed the condom from off the windowsill and he uh, politely took the condom away from me, you know, to tell me that he was negative, that he was safe, and I believed him. And from that point on, for the duration of that weekend, we had sex unprotected. He finally confessed and told me the truth. He pulled out, as I was getting myself dressed, he pulled out this huge folder, manila envelope folder. I, and I asked him, I said, why didn't you tell me the truth when I asked you? He said, because you're a nice guy and I don't want to die alone. So I chose you to be with me forever. What if I wanted kids? What if at some point my life changed? You know, nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants to die early. You've taken choices away from me. He believed, he believed that God had mirac miraculously touched him and healed him without any medications, without any assistance. He died three days, three years later. I remember feeling like there was a heavy, heavy weight on the back of my head. And it felt like, you know, my head was being pushed down like that. I was sitting on a bar stool, so all I could see were my boots. 
But there are three things that I remember clearly. They are Sina Dye's shoes in between mine, the strong smell of aftershave, and a guy's voice saying to me, Do you need some fresh air, mate? When I woke up, I felt sick. I was shaking, I was sweating, I just felt horrendous. And I looked around me and realised I was in my apartment. I went to get up to have a shower, and when I went to stand, my legs completely gave way. I couldn't put any weight on them at all. I kicked off my boots and started to get undressed to have a shower. As my jeans fell to the floor, I noticed that they were covered in blood. My underwear was covered in blood, and the backs of my legs were covered in blood. And I collapsed again, on the floor, in a heat, just saying, no, God, please, no, God, how can that have happened? If that had happened, I would have remembered. My mind was literally spinning like that. And then I know what they tell you. I know what they say, don't wash away evidence. I felt like somebody had opened a bottle of acid, poured it all over my body, and that the skin was literally falling off my bones. After 40 minutes, I got out of the shower, called the hospital, they called the police. Police came, picked me up, took my clothes for evidence, questioned me, did blood tests, did physical examinations. All this stuff was going on, and to be honest, I didn't really take any of it in until a couple of hours later, a doctor came in with a policeman, and he said, Stephen, from the blood work we did, we have found that you have Rohypnol in your blood. Rohypnol was the day rape drug at the time. He also said, from the physical evidence, we can tell that you've been raped. This was six months later, but I thought, you know, I need to get this done, then I can go and finish and put this behind me. Went to the hospital, had the blood test done, was told to come back in an hour. In an hour, I went back into the doctor's office, and she sat down with me and just said, Stephen, I'm so sorry. The person that raped you was HIV positive, and you now too have HIV. I was diagnosed in um, 2003, so I've had it for almost 15 years, and, or at least 15 years that I know of.